Well, they made this awesome Ted Bundy documentary that was like brutal and hardcore and a lot of people were amped to see the movie that they were going to make about this guy. I don't know why he's getting so much attention, but here he is. And I'm going to review that movie because the reviewing the tapes was just too much. Like, it was all true crime shit. It was very brutal. Although there are some funny moments about how fucked up and horrible the cops are when it comes to investigating this sort of shit. I just didn't have time to do it. So I'm going to review Extremely Wicked, Totally Terrible, Awful, No Good, Very Bad Day, the movie about Ted Bundy on Netflix. And if you haven't seen it, this is just as good as seeing it because I'm just going to tell you everything that fucking happens and what I think about it. So let's go. It definitely tells an interesting story. I mean, like, she's at first she's meeting him in prison for some reason, and she's, like, having flashbacks of when they met, and she's like, oh, he's such a cool guy. I love him so much. Oh, why is he in prison? What's going on? And, like, this whole movie is about Liz's relationship with Ted and how, like, she never saw him do any of that horrible shit. She's got weird vibes and stuff. And I'm like, that sucks, because this guy was an asshole. They're slow dancing and stuff. It's supposed to be all cute, but like the whole time you're just like, why can't you just have Zac Efron be a horrible killer like Ted Bundy and just show all the shit that he actually did or whatever, not like show it, but whatever. But like focusing on his relationship with this one chick, it's just very strange because he's obviously a fucking psychopath. She actually brings Ted Bundy to her house and she's like, oh shit, it's, is it cool that I have a baby? And he's like, yeah, it's cool, I'm a normal guy. And he's like, she's like, aww. And, like, in reality, like, the fact that, like, Ted Bundy dates this chick for years and raises this kid with her or whatever is fucking skeezy. Like, who knows what he did to that kid? It's fucked up. The thing, it's like, I've known this motherfucker for years, and, like, whenever I'd not be seeing him, he'd be chopping people's fucking heads off. Like, whoa, dude, that's a lot. So they proceed to date for years and years, and, like, it's all good. They're, like, showing clips of him just chilling out and being a good father, I guess. And meanwhile, like, people are getting freaking murdered by this dude left and right all over the countryside. And then one night he gets pulled over by the dude from Metallica, and like, the Metallica dude's like, what is all that shit in your backseat? And he's like, uh, he was like, fucking, you're coming with me, dude. They arrest his ass and they fucking take him in, but like, of course, like, he knows all the loopholes and he gets right the fuck out, even though they had him. They have him, they get him a couple times and just let him go. Dude, Ted Buddy was a weird guy. There's one part where Liz comes, where Ted Buddy comes home and Liz is there and she's like, oh shit, just stay here. And like, fuck it, she goes up and slaps Ted Bundy in the face, and he's like, what the, like, why did you do that? And you could tell he was like suppressing all his crazy anger and shit. This fucking serial killer dude has a damn good lawyer, and he gets him right the fuck off. It's awesome. And like, Liz starts to drink a lot because she's stressing. He's, uh, Ted's like, uh, I fucking didn't do it, dude. I'm just getting set up. I'm getting followed. Like, people are setting me up, dude. I swear I'm not a horrible serial killer. It's everybody else but me. And she's like, all right. So Ted Bundy goes to the fucking law library to just hang out and probably scope out victims, honestly. And like this one chick's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. And like she tells the fucking security guard, and the security guard's like, dude, just get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, you piece of shit, get out of here. And he's like, what did I do? And she's like, dude, Ted, come on. There's a part where Liz wakes up and he's looking at, like, looking with a flashlight under the blankets and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what does that even do? Like, he's just staring at her butt with a flashlight in the middle of the night because, like, I mean, I can understand staring at her butt because that's always fun, but, like, a flashlight? Like, where did you take the flashlight from? His lawyer is like, dude, the cops totally think you did all this shit, so you might want to tighten it up. He's on trial for an attempted kidnapping of this chick, Carol, and who he tried to put in his car and bring with him. And like, she was probably close enough to actually see the dude, so it's just like, I don't know why people didn't believe her when it's just like, if somebody, if you get in a car with somebody, you know what they fucking look like, so that's just some like, don't believe shit, don't believe victim shit in like the 70s, because apparently the 70s was a lawless time, and there was no cameras on every corner, and there was no DNA, and there was no none of that shit, so it's just like, you could be a fucking serial killer and just run around killing everybody, you could put a chick in your car, and be like, I didn't do that, and but people won't even believe the fucking chick, like, goddamn. They go to adopt a doggo, and they run into Carol Ann Boone, who is probably my favorite character in this movie because she's so just endearing, like, goddamn, she's a down-ass bitch. Like, she's just, ran they randomly go to adopt a dog, and she's just randomly there, like, oh, I'm just hanging out at the dog kennel. I'm just ha what are you guys doing here? Like, I'm just, I'm just standing here, like, oh, shit, Ted Bundy, what are you, oh, my God, hi. Ugh, it sucks that you're going through all this shit, Ted. I'm following your case really closely, and I think you'll get off fine, and I'm just randomly here, it's fine. 
And Tiffany's like, uh, yeah, I'm with my girlfriend here, and, uh, thanks, I guess. And then they go and they look at this dog, and he's giving this dog the serial killer eyes, as I like to call him. And the fucking dog is just like, oh man, this guy's fucking crazy. I need to, hopefully I don't get adopted by this specific couple. I'm just gonna chill the fuck out. I'm just gonna chill. So, they're listening to the soundtrack from A Clockwork Orange, where Alex is fucking jerking off to his snake with the picture, and, like, he just listens to that music when he's hanging out. Like, apparently only psychopaths listen to classical music, so if you hear anybody playing Beethoven or a fucking Mozart, get the fuck out of there, dude. Like, it's not a good scene for you. Anyway, they start doing it, and she's like, oh, I love doing it with Ted Bundy. He's so freaky. Like, oh, I bet he is. And, like, all this shit. And he goes to court, unfortunately, and he gets fucking locked up for the rest of the movie, like, or possibly. And <clears throat> it's sad, but, like, thank God he got that, they got that motherfucker off the streets. Prison sucks. I mean, obviously. And, like, Ted Bundy is just fucking hanging out, like, trying to do his, like, law homework, probably jerking off the witness testimony of the fucking horrible crime scene because he was that type of fucking douchebag. When this other dude comes in and is like, hey, bro, have you ever been to Colorado? And Ted Bundy was like, no, I've never been to Colorado. I'm a fucking law student. I do whatever the fuck I want. I'm fine. And then the detective's like, good, because I'm a fucking detective and your ass is going down, dude. You just fucking lied to a detective? You lied to me? Like, fuck you, dude, Ted Bundy. Your ass is grass. Like, fucking, he's, and Ted Bundy's like, what? His lawyer gets pissed at him. He's like, dude, did you fucking, did you talk to somebody? Because somebody fucking, did you fucking talk to somebody? Ted Bundy's like, no. Like, Ted Bundy lies a lot. And fucking lawyer's like, well, they're fucking getting your ass, they're shipping your ass from where we are right now to Colorado because you lied. Now they're going to get you for more murders and shit because... All this, and you've done a bunch of murders, and you're really sloppy about your shit, so we're done. I can't be your lawyer anymore, because I can only practice law in this state, and now you're fucked. So I'll, I'll see you in hell, dude. Click. And Tiffany's he's like, no. Uh, meanwhile, Liz is a full-blown alcoholic. She doesn't drink from the bottle, though, so I respect it. Like, she always pours it in a glass. She always pours it in a glass, so that's good. Like, if she drinks from the bottle, then she's just lazy. Like, alcoholics drink from the bottle, like... You know, whatever. Her and her friend get into a big ass argument because she still loves the multiple murderer serial killer dude. Like, like I still love him. And her friends and her friends like, dude, he did a lot of shit, dude. Really, you don't believe that he did that? And she's like, get the fuck out. I'm just like, ugh. That's how it is, though. Stand by your man, dude. I wish I could find that kind of devotion. Uh, he gets to defend himself in Colorado and just loopholes upon loopholes. Makes you want to go back to law school and be like, you know what? I'd probably be a damn good lawyer. Looking at all this bullshit, like I could probably be like. The defense rests, and they're like, you know what I mean? Like, fuck. So he's defending himself, and he gets to hang out in his law office, and like, he calls Liz over and over. He's like, hey, baby, I'm a lawyer now. Ooh, I'm defending myself. I'm going to get off, baby. I'm going to get off, and I'm going to come see you, and we're going to get married, and we're going to have a baby, another baby. And I didn't kill anybody, I swore. And she's like, ugh. She hangs up, and like Ted Bundy's like, fuck. So they're like, you know what, guys? The court's like, we want the death penalty for this guy. If we can get it, we're going to get it. Ted Bundy's like, ooh, like I'm feeling less confident about my lawyer abilities right now, so I'm going to I'm gonna jump out this fucking window and escape. So he jumps out the fucking window and escapes the fucking law. And they're like, what the fuck? One thing that sucks about this movie is they don't really show any of the, the gnarlier stuff that he does. That's probably why they made that documentary because, like, if you watch just this movie, it seems it's very, it's just a, a, a it's one percent of the story of Ted Bundy. It's just like, oh, I heard you escaped. He's like, yeah, I did. But like, they don't show what he actually did when he escapes any of these times. He's just sort of like, well, I was off the map, I was off the map here, and now I'm back on the map. And there's two weeks. We don't fucking know what he was doing. <coughs> and like that sucks because it's like they should show him escaping and going up into the mountains and doing whatever the fuck he did and like you know what I mean they should show him doing all that but they don't they just show Liz's perspective of him where she's like I don't know where he is and then like she he calls or visits and he's like oh there he is like I can write about that but like I wish this movie would have like had more money to just go and show some of this crazy shit but they don't. Uh, Liz goes to actually see Ted in prison and like she, he's like baby I love you so much I didn't do it everything's gonna be fine we're gonna get married and we're gonna have baby and we're gonna get a doggo and we're gonna go fucking we're gonna go to Hawaii it's gonna be fucking great and Liz is like dude you're gonna get like 15 years for the fucking shit that you were accused of and then 90 years for fucking escaping for the fucking two weeks that you got caught for that you mentioned until now so you're probably gonna be away for 110 years dude I don't think I can do this anymore I think it's over and then Ted's like no <coughs> no and like fucking Liz is like yeah we're done so she gives him the, the picture that, his, that her daughter drew, and it's a, a shark eating a fish while another fish has its eyes closed. And that is very fucking symbolic and poetic. 
and like, ugh, like right on the fucking neck. Meanwhile, Ted is cutting a hole in a ceiling panel, just like, just gnawing away at it with a knife that he just randomly steals. Like, holy shit, dude, like, wow. Like, how the fuck are you gonna cut a hole in a fucking panel and climb the fuck out of jail? Like, what the hell kind of prison was this? So he escapes again, dude. And the one detective dude visits Liz and he gives her this awesome ass envelope and he's like, this envelope has some brutal shit in it and your fucking dude did it. So just fucking quit fucking trying to protect him and love him and just get the fuck out of this situation because this guy's an asshole. And she's like, I don't believe you. Ted Bundy has another VW bug. It's like, he must have really loved that fucking car. It's like, if everybody knows that you, the killer, drive a VW bug, why the fuck would you get another VW bug, like multiple VW bugs? Like, I had one in Ohio, I had one in Utah, and I got one in Florida. It's like, that's my thing. It's my murder mobile. It might have been the only... It might have been the only car that he knew how to modify, like where I'm gonna take this the seat out and put a little cage in there so when you get in, a cage drops on you and I can just take you wherever I want. But like, it was like, dude, I'm sure all the cops are just like, look for VW bugs that look weird and have blood stains on them because that's probably Ted Bunny's car and he drives and he fucking gets pulled over and he's like, God damn it, not again. And he punches the fucking cop. And I'm like, wow, dude, it must be fucking nice to be able to punch a cop and not get instantly fucking executed. He calls Liz again, and he's like, hey, baby, I miss you, I love you, I'm in custody, I'm probably gonna fucking get executed for the shit that happened because it's real, real bad, but I also didn't do it. And she's like, click, fuck. The governor from Florida shows up, and she, he's like, well, they had you in Boston, and they let you go. They had you in Detroit, and you escaped. But now your ass is in fucking Florida, and you're fucking done. And she takes the fucking shark drawing, he's like, this fucking shark drawing, fuck you, bro. Get the shit out of here. Ted Buddy's like, whoa. And they fucking send a bunch of people in, they take molds of his teeth and all that, and take pictures of his teeth, and he's like, what the fuck? So Liz effectively stops answering Ted's calls, and Ted's like, oh man, who the fuck can I call now? Ghostbusters? No. I'll call Carol Ann Boone instead. And I'm like, dude, I love Carol in this fucking movie because she is a down ass bitch, dude. Like, if you look at her fucking picture, like, she probably killed a bunch of people herself. Like, I wouldn't be put it past her that she was a fucking serial killer. I mean, look at this fucking, she just, you can just tell she was on some shit. And I'm like, she's fucking all about Ted Bundy. She's like, the only thing that I'm worried about you murdering Ted is you murdering this pussy. Wink, wink. And Ted Bundy's like, what? <laughs> it's fucking like she's like he's like what? And he's in, she's like yeah I'll move to Florida for your ass. I'm like wow dude it must be fucking nice to like have that level of devotion. Just like oh yeah I'll do whatever you want babe. Like I'm in prison for death for murder and I'm going to fucking get executed in like a couple of years. And she's like mm hmm and, and just like this. <laughs> Ted's uh, co uh, court case is broadcasted on TV, which is probably why he's so famous and infamous now. It's just like hey should we put murderers? on TV and make him more infamous and famous and then kill him in front of everybody. Like, yeah, sure, we'll get good ratings doing that shit. Like, yeah. And then 20 years later, we're still fucking talking about that fucker. So I guess that shit works. Like, you know, like Ed Gein didn't get a big ass trial like that. I mean, he might have. I mean, I don't think they had cameras back then because that was like 300 fucking years ago. Ed Gein was a piece of shit. Ted's lawyer's a fucking idiot. You can tell he's terrified of him. Like, I would be too. I'm like, wow. Oh, do it. Does he really need a lawyer? Because like he obviously did. Like how many fucking skulls can we fucking find in this guy's fucking back pocket before it's like, oh, he's a guilty. Also, Ted Bundy. Like, whenever you see the real pictures of him or the clips, he had such crazy fucking eyes. Like, I don't know how people put that shit past him that he would be a murderer because his eyes just told him crazy stories. He always had crazy fucking eyes. I'm like, dude, this guy's fucking. Ugh. There's one part where uh, Carol Ann has Ted's mom come to visit and Ted gets pissed. Like, he's just like, why the fuck did you bring my mom here? And he keeps giving her dirty ass looks like, God damn it, Carol Ann, if there weren't a million people in here right now, I would kill you. And Carol Ann's like, oh, daddy, please. And she, and, Carol, and Ted's like, you're fucking, I guess you're all right, dude. Like, but still, I can only imagine, like, fucking the type of shit that, like, they seem like they had an intense ass relationship. And like me, I had a couple of intense ass relationships, but not that bad. My favorite scene is when him and Carol Ann Boone are banging in the fucking visitation room, and I'm just like, good for you, Carol Ann. 
Good for you, dude. Get you some of that fucking serial killer butt, dude. Like, fucking, you deserve it. Like, you've been a down ass bitch for so long. You might as well get you a little bit of piece of that fucking Teddy Bundy D. Like, good for you. Like, I applaud that. And she fucking gets pregnant by that motherfucker. She has a baby by him. Has a baby by a fucking serial killer. So they're probably running around here still, just doing whatever the fuck they do. And I'm like, damn, dude, that's heavy. I had no idea. But I'm happy for Caroline that she got some. Then, like, on the stand, he's like, hey, baby, do you want to marry me in front of everybody, in front of all these court people? And she's like, yeah. Daddy, I do. Everybody's like, objection, you can't do that. And like, it's the state of Florida, you can totally do that. And the, lawyer, the fucking judge is like, oh, this fucking guy, dude, can you please fry this motherfucker because I'm sick of dealing with him. And like, amen to that. Liz admits that she feels really, really fucking guilty and horrible when it's all this shit because she's the one who first gave Ted Bunny's names to the cops. Back in the day, after he did only two murders, he was still a rookie. And she's like, I feel really bad because if he didn't do it, then like it's my fault because the cops were putting all this shit on him and I feel bad. And her fucking boyfriend's like, but he did do all that shit. Like, fucking, he is a killer. Like, fucking, like, if anybody, you're a fucking hero. Like, you deserve to get a Netflix movie made about you in 25 years because you're the one who fucking put Ted Bundy on the fucking map. Like, nobody else would have believed that he was the fucking guy. They would have let him go for years and years and years. I mean, which kind of happened. But, like, yeah, so thanks, Liz. Like, fucking, yeah, we date, you, know, you can only fuck some weird serial killer for so long if you're like, hey, this isn't right. So it's like, hey, cheers to that. Ted gets the death penalty, which sucks because he should have took the plea, obviously. I mean, you can't kill people and think you're gonna defend yourself and get off, especially with that type of evidence and that type of guilt. So, you know, and like, the judge is like, your ass is guilty, we're gonna fry you, sorry. And like, he gives this long ass meandering speech about how he didn't do it and how, how the courts are fucked up and how like the cops have failed the system because the person who kills people is still out there running around. But the whole thing is, the whole time he gives this long ass speech is that he does not blink one fucking time. It's like, if your eyes say one thing but your mouth say another thing, then that's all you gotta do. You can actually cover up his the, his mouth in the scene and watch his eyes and they look like just fucking like, he's like ready to fucking kill the fucking judge. And like, that's the power of this movie is the performances. They're really fucking good performances. And I definitely respect Zac Efron for fucking uh, knocking that shit out of the park. Like, I can play a subdued, lying white dude who kills people. Like, cool. You get the part, you know? So, that's cool. So his ass is fucking in fucking life sentence territory and murder territory and that sucks for him but also it's great for everybody else. They do show Carolina right after they show Ted blink not blinking and she blinks hard to show that she's a uh, human and not like a murdering corpse robot thing like Ted Bundy was. Uh, ten years later, Ted Bundy's about to get executed and Liz goes to see him one last time and like there's one intense ass scene between the two of them which I won't ruin because if you haven't watched the movie it's nice to see it just naturally play out for the first time and like it's some shit that you can talk about and be like oh yeah let's analyze it but at the same time it's good to just be like take it in for yourself and get your own fucking ideals of like that last part because it's pretty badass and it's like I, one thing about making videos is like you can't spoil everything and I'll like, just get to the end where she's talking to Ted and it's like, I guess it's worth it. She tells, he tells her enough shit for her to burst out of the courtroom crying and shit and just like, oh god, he is a fucking killer. Like, he did it all, like, fuck it. He was alone with my kid, like, I was fucking a serial killer, like, oh god. And she's all fucking sad about that. I'm like, well, yeah, that sucks. He gets fucking executed, and there's actually pictures of him after his execution online, which are fucking scary and brutal as fuck. Like, I mean, I guess they had to leak those. It's because of, like, you know, all the shit that he did. They're like, oh, well, here's him. He's dead, too. So, like, here's a picture of him with his fucking... Ooh. And it's fucking hardcore. I wouldn't put it in the video because I feel like it's just too much. Especially because of all the death and murder. But, yeah. Like, at the end, he gets deathed and murdered, and everybody's just like... Oh, thank fucking God. You know, there's a million more serial killers out there that are just as bad as Ted Buddy, except except he was just the one that got caught. And why like, there's a million other shits going on, but like this one guy is in the fucking ground, and we can all relax a little bit. And then years later, like they make the movie Silence of the Lambs, which is pretty much based on Ted Bundy because it's about some elegant, smooth ass fucking serial killer who like seems like he knows all this shit because he does, but he's actually gonna fuck you up once he gets you alone. And that's Hannibal Lecter, like he was based on Ted Bundy, which is fucking nuts because. The end credits show how fucking crazy Ted Bunny looked in real life and how much of a piece of shit he was. And like, uh, watching the movie now, it sucks to relive all the horrible shit he did. And I'd like to fucking apologize to the families of the victims of the fucking people that 
dude killed, and like it sucks that they had to go through that, and it sucks that this motherfucker gets more infamy 20 years later, but at the same time, like they fucking definitely like, fucking, like, uh, like I don't know, there's a lot of women that like victims that are unclaimed, and like there are people that he killed that we don't even fucking know about, their bodies that were never found, and like it sucks, but like hopefully, like in the future, people won't be such assholes to each other. So that's the end of the video, and like if you kill people, then you're a piece of shit, and if you don't kill people, then fucking good for you, dude. Like, I'm Garrett Favor, and that's it.